Hello friends and welcome to A Shot of Code. Today we're going to be looking at lazy loading with Webpack 4. Um, now this allows us to reduce that initial download of a, a SPA application. Um, you can picture maybe you've got a, a one or two megabyte bundle that Webpack gives you and, and that initial download to the client will take some time um, and certainly on slower networks is going to be very noticeable. Um, you know everything these days is is bundled from from all of our you know tens hundreds of modules um, but you know somewhere in there there's a there's a sweet spot between having loads of modules and one massive module um, certainly if um, there's parts of the application that aren't always used then lazy loading uh, can be very effective there you know it's only going to get pulled down if it, if you use them and if not, you know, your initial load time is going to be um, a lot shorter. Um, so best thing, if we jump in here, I've got um, Visual Studio Code open and I've created uh, a very simple um, Polymer 3 lit element component here. I've got a, a standard Webpack setup. We're using um, the HTML plugin. Um, this this is going to help us with one of the additional things that Webpack gives us for lazy loading, which is the ability to specify preload and prefetch HTTP header hints as well. Um, so not only can we dynamic load it, but we can we can give it those extra hints, which um, again allows us to optimize quite how um, and when the download will take place. And I'll describe both of those as we go along. Um, so, yeah, I've got three files here then. So, um, the component, um, our Webpack config to bundle and um, allow us to do the lazy loading. And then just a simple page here that's got my component on. Um, so, if I just give it um, some text here, then we should see that come up. Okay, so our component is working. Um, so the first thing we'll do is let's um, let's not start looking at some of the sizes here. You know, our initial bundle is one file, a main.js. If I come back to the web.config, um, here's our output, main.js into the dist folder. Um, and we can see it in the network tab here, it's 400k out of the box with, with Polymer. Um, let's let's say we've got a dependency on uh, Lodash. Like so. Um, so I've brought, brought this into the application previously before. Um, and okay, so we can see now we're up to nearly a megabyte with just those two libraries. I mean, yeah, you would tree shake and so on and, and bring it down, but um, this will give us uh, an idea of, of how lazy loading could help us. So, you know, say we're losing Lodash. Let's let's see now um, if we can lazy load that. So we will dynamically load it. Um, the syntax we're using here is our static at build time load. And what we will need to do is a slightly different format. Um, and we'll need to trigger it. So let's have... A button on here you could picture maybe um, a button for logging in you know not everyone's going to log into a website um, and if there was a lot of code in there and in this case say our login requires some of Lodash um, then we could potentially just bring that in if needed um, so let's say uh, load Lodash like so and we'll just give a handle on there on click And so we'll have a function in here and it will call our load low dash method. Pop that here and just to start with we'll just console log it loading load dash. Uh, and just check that that works. So we've got our button, we click on it, and if I go into 
here. Just clear it down so we can see. Oh, wrong one, that one there. So if I click on load ash, okay, we are getting that method called. Now, let's then take this import out and dynamically import it here. So the syntax is actually um, import and then open and close parenthesis. And we simply provide the um, package name in here. And that returns as a promise, which actually contains the module uh, that we've loaded passed in. So mod here will be our lodash package. I mean, we could let's make it underscore. Um, like so. Well, no, let's leave it as mod. In fact, let's change that back to mod. So that's our module. Um, so now we could say, let's grab our console.log. And we'll just put a couple of spaces in each side and then give that a run as well. If I just want the console at the moment and click on there. Okay, so we can see loading low dash and you can see it's got the spaces in there. So let's um, let's do mod.trim. And so we're now using our uh, low dash functionality. And if I clear that off again now, we look in here, you can see that it's using that functionality. So we've got low dash available uh, and we didn't import it at the top of our file, we imported it on the button click. Um, let's look at the network. If I come in here, give that a clear and a refresh. So when our page initially loads, we're seeing our main.js. So just to say we'll cache in it so we can see the sizes. Um, so it's down to 450k now because we haven't got low dash, which put it up to nearly a meg. Um, but then as soon as I click on this button here, we're going to come into our low dash function and that is going to call import and then we'll use the functionality there. So we can see straight away we've got a new bundle here. Uh, 500k so it split that out for us so our initial load was a lot smaller um, and if I show you in what webpack created in our dist we've got our main and then we've got this zero dot main which is our split out um, our code split bundle that we can then lazily load um, now that's all well and good but it doesn't really fit in with this kind of the spa architecture of you know your application is running locally and there's there's no going back to the server for different pages um, so what webpack allows us to do here is specify those http header hints um, prefetch or preload so the difference between those two is um, prefetch you would apply to scripts that may get used in a future navigation or um, user, um, whatever the user is doing. Um, so that they're not necessarily going to be used. And so those ones, the browser will try and pull down when it's idle. It won't. It won't try. It won't bring it down while it's got other things to do. It will just wait for an idle state. If it's doing nothing, it'll pull them down. Um, so in the case of this uh, this example here, if we had a login button, we would we would want to do this as a prefetch. Um, so the page will load, the user will look around the page. You know, you've got a little bit of time there until they find and click that login button, and the page will be interactive quicker. But then as soon as they click that button, we'll pull in. Um, well. The, the file should already been there in the idle time so not stopping them from interacting with the page so let's let's have a look at how that works so um, if I go back into the component and in here we can add a magic comment as webpack calls it in front of our import statement so webpack will look at this as it processes the bundle 
um, and we can say webpack webpack pre fetch and say true now for this to work you need we need to be using that HTML webpack plugin um, because it is going to inject our script differently into index.html if we look at what we have at the moment so there's nothing here in our source um, but when this file gets created by HTML webpack plugin it's injecting our script for us um, our main bundle and now it's going to inject that um, uh, that split bundle um, what I could show just if I just take this out again for a second we can have a look on the page that we're getting uh, if we look at our page here and in the head and let's me scroll it up so in our head at the moment there's no scripts there um, but when I click on load low dash you can see that script is injected um, but it waited until uh, we click the button uh, but at that point it's got to go back to the server to get the file so you you know you're going to see a delay there as well if we look on the network you know there's the time there's 37 milliseconds there um, and yeah it's had to pull sorry 300 milliseconds there and it's had to pull that down caching can get interesting if I do it without uh, with caching enabled you can see it's still pulling it down uh, 10 milliseconds there so I'll just add in initiator as well I think um, okay yeah you can see you get a 304 so it's gone to the server it's got a 304 back not modified um, so it's quick but there's a server call involved and we'd like we don't really want to have that there there's no need that um, hopefully there should be idle time that we can use so let me put this back in webpack prefetch true uh, now with that in place um, we can see we've got this vendors one here now um, and hoping to see in our index that we get the script injected um, it won't actually be here it does happen at runtime so we won't see in the code here but this is compiled now um, so let me refresh here and go back into elements and the head and no we still haven't got it there let's and just to a build okay so that's built ah, I think it's a small F that may be causing the problem there so let's do that and web pack the server Okay, and if we look at the index now, it's still okay there. Give this a refresh. Go to the head. Okay, and now we can see we've got a link in here for our script, um, and that link has prefetch specified, um, which will mean it will try and pull this down in the idle time. So if I look. Um, at the network if I do a refresh here now we've got main.js um, but you notice this one was already pulled down and we can tell that because it's brought it in from the cache um, previously you could see that this um, was a size and, and the 304 this one is just giving us an okay and it's because because this file was brought down in the idle time um, that is the advantage it gives us there um, so that's prefetch and lazy loading now the preload um, preload not as useful I don't think you know it, 
preload tries to tell the browser what file, what um, resources it's going to need to be pulled down. So rather than the browser having to look through your whole index.html and find what it needs, which can take time, um, it's, it's specified at the top of the file and those are immediately gone and fetched. Um, but in terms of the lazy loading we're looking at here um, for your spa and splitting it up into smaller ones, it would be uh, prefetch that we'd be looking to, to use. Um, so I'll just bring that back up again. So yeah, the, you know, the thing to remember is this format um, using the parentheses um, and then this magic keyword that Webpack 4 needs to, to add in um, its, if I bring it back up in here again, add in this prefetch for us. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's a lazy loading uh, with Webpack 4 and using the prefetch um, header. Hope that was uh, useful. Um, hope to see you next time. Bye.